good morning students i am going to start with the solid state chapter of class 12 before i start with i would like to brief you something about matter matter is anything which occupies space and has got mass all of you know about it right you are knowing about it so matter we can classify into two types physical classification and chemical classification physically we classify matter into three types the three types are solid liquid and gas right and chemical classification we don't need to study so here we start with our new chapter the solid state and before we go for it let me show you some of the slides and with the help of slides we we'll go ahead so firstly we start with the general characteristic features of solids yes i hope you can view the slides also they possess definite shape and definite volume the constituent particles are very closely packed that is interplanar distances are very small then the forces of attraction that are present in solids are very strong and intermolecular forces that is they are very strong in nature there the constituent particles they occupy fixed positions and they can oscillate only about their mean positions that's why we say that solids are rigid in nature the question might come why are solids rigid in nature solids are rigid in nature due to the presence of strong intermolecular forces of attraction which are present among them and they the constituent particles that are present have fixed positions and they can oscillate only about their mean positions that's why they are highly incompressible in nature also they have got high density now let us come to the next slide that is classification of solids on the basis of nature of order present in the arrangement of constituent particles so we can classify solids into two types crystalline solids one the second one is amorphous solids before i go with the distinction let me tell you clarify about amorphous solids first amorphous the name amorphous has come from the greek word amorphous meaning no shape that means amorphous solids have no definite shape whereas crystalline solids have got definite geometrical shape that is the main distinction between crystalline solids and amorphous solids in our lab also you will you will be given some of the salts and looking at the nature just by looking at it you need to differentiate that which is the crystalline ones and which is the amorphous part so for that crystalline if you can see the the crystal that is given to you if it is present in some definite geometrical shape it comes under crystalline solid right and amorphous solids are they are powdery in nature they are present in powder form let us now come to the distinction between crystalline solids and amorphous solids the first and foremost difference between crystalline and amorphous solids is on the basis of shape crystalline solids have got definite geometrical shape and amorphous solids are got irregular shape then second point melting point crystalline solids have got sharp melting points and amorphous solids on the other hand they melt or they soften over a range of temperature next the third most important property of crystalline solids and amorphous solids is cleavage property so in cleavage property when you look at the crystalline solids when you cut it with a sharp knife or with a sharp edge tool the crystalline solid will split into two pieces and they generate plain and smooth surfaces there whereas in amorphous solid when it is cut with a sharp edge tool that is with a knife they cut into pieces with irregular surfaces i hope it's clear till here 
Now let us look at the fourth point, heat of fusion. Crystalline solids have got definite heat of fusion, whereas amorphous solids, they have got they do not have definite heat of fusion. The next property is anisotropy. This I'll explain you in detail also. First, let me tell you the distinction between crystalline and amorphous solids. Crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature, whereas amorphous solids are isotropic in nature there. Correct? I'll explain you about it. Nature. Next, let us come to the sixth property, nature. In nature, if you see, crystalline solids are true solids. Remember in your mind. Whereas, amorphous solids are pseudo-solids or they are super-cooled liquids. So, glass is an example which comes under it. The question is asked, why is glass considered to be a pseudo-solid or why is glass called a super-cooled liquid there? The answer to that question you'll write, that glass is an amorphous solid and it has got a tendency to flow. That's why they are called as pseudo-solids or super-cooled liquids there. Next, the last difference, distinction, between crystalline and amorphous solid, order in arrangement of constituent particles. Order in arrangement of constituent particles, crystalline solids have got long range order. Long range order means the constituent particles are present in a definite geometry. They give definite geometrical shape to the crystal there. Whereas in amorphous solids, they have got only short range order means the constituent particles are not arranged in, they are present in haphazard manner. They, are, they don't have a definite geometry. So here we finished with that of the distinction between crystalline solids and amorphous solids there. I hope it is clear to all of you. Let us come to the next topic, next slide. Yes. I was telling you that I'll explain you about an isotropic nature as well as the isotropic nature. You can see here the diagram. Crystalline solids are an isotropic in nature. Why? Because if you look at some of the physical properties like electrical resistance or refractive index, they show different values when measured along different directions there. That is, if you see the electrical resistance or refractive index value, the physical properties, they generate different values when measured along different directions in the same crystals there. You can look at the diagram also. You can see with the help of the diagram, you can understand that they generate different values along different directions there. Whereas amorphous solids, if you see, they are isotropic in nature, meaning when you look at the physical properties there, physical properties like refractive index, electrical resistance, when they are seen, they generate same value along any direction there, right? That is the main difference between crystalline solid and, and your amorphous solid. That is, crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature, whereas amorphous solids are isotropic in nature. I hope. It's clear. The difference is clear. Yes, look at the in-text questions. The first question in-text, which is there, is why are solids rigid? Please listen to my answer very carefully. I'm just giving the answer. And in your assignment, you will be answering these in-text questions there. Solids are rigid in nature because they are held together by strong intermolecular forces of attraction and the constituent particles that are present, they have fixed positions and they can oscillate only about their mean positions. That's why solids are rigid in nature. I gave you the general characteristics of the solids there, right? So that's why that point you will include here, solids are rigid in nature. Second question you see, why do solids have a definite volume? The same answer again you can repeat. Solids have a definite volume due to the presence of strong intermolecular forces of attraction which are present in between them. 
Now look at index question 1.3. Classify the following as amorphous or crystalline solids. Now see here, I forgot to tell you that amorphous solids, they don't have definite shape. They, the geometry is, it is, they are arranged in haphazard manner there. So for amorphous solids, the examples will include all polymers, rubber, plastic, polymers, they all come under amorphous solids. Whereas for crystalline solids, ionic solids, most of them will come under the examples for crystalline solids here. So for amorphous solids, in this question 1.3, I am giving you the examples of amorphous solids. Polyurethane, Teflon, cellophane, polyvinyl chloride and fiberglass. These come under examples of amorphous solids. I repeat, polyurethane, Teflon, cellophane, polyvinyl chloride and fiberglass. Whereas crystalline solids, naphthalene, benzoic acid, potassium nitrate and copper. They come under the examples of crystalline solids. Next question. Why is glass considered a supercool liquid? Glass is considered a supercool liquid because glass is an amorphous solid. That is the first and foremost point you'll write. Glass is an amorphous solid and it has got the tendency to flow. That's why glass is considered as a supercool liquid. I hope you understood. Let us come to the next question, 1.5. Refractive index of a solid is observed to have the same value along all directions. Comment on the nature of this solid. Would it show cleavage property? Nature of this solid means you need to tell whether it is amorphous or crystalline solid. Just now I told, if the values are observed to have same value along all directions, it is an amorphous solid. So you'll write, comment on the nature of this solid. Answer is, it is an amorphous solid. Would it show cleavage property? So you'll write there, since it is an amorphous solid, it will not show cleavage property. It will generate irregular surfaces there. Right? That is how you'll answer to these questions. And it is an assignment for you. Please do write along with the question and answer. Next, we come to the classification of crystalline solids. You will learn this table in detail. That is, there are four different types of solids, crystalline solids, based on the constituent particles. We can classify based on intermolecular forces of attraction. We can classify crystalline solids into four types. First is molecular solid, second is ionic solid, third is metallic solid and the fourth one is covalent solids there. So one by one I would like to deal with detail. Look at my flow chart that you can that is depicted on this slide. Crystalline solids, they are classified into four types. Remember the four types along with the examples. Examples are important. Molecular solids, ionic solids, metallic solids, and covalent or network solids there. Molecular solids are further classified into three types. Three types. Non-polar solids, polar solids, and hydrogen bonded solids there. Molecular solids, as the name says, the constituent particles that are present are molecules. Constituent particles that are present are molecules. Ionic solids, you can see the constituent particles that are present are ions. Metallic solids, the constituent particles that are present are positive ions as a sea of delocalized electrons. So positive ions are the constituent particles for metallic solids. And for covalent to network solids, it is they are atoms that are present as constituent particles. So one by one, let me deal with molecular solids first. Molecular solids are classified into three types, as I said before, nonpolar, polar, and hydrogen bonded molecular solids. Nonpolar molecules says that 
the there is no polarity that is present in the molecular solids there they do not carry dipole moments on them and the attractive forces that is the bonding that is present in non polar molecules are either dispersion forces or london forces there examples you can see all non polar examples they are non polar in nature argon carbon tetrachloride hydrogen iodine carbon dioxide etc you can give the examples physical nature if you see they are soft in nature electrical conductivity they act as insulators there and melting point it is very low there second i come to polar molecular solids the bonding the attractive force that is present in between them constant particles or molecules the bonding attractive force that is present in case of polar molecular solids are dipole dipole interactions and the examples which come under this polar molecular solids are hcl sulfur dioxide so2 etc they come under polar molecular solids physical nature it is soft and they act as all molecular solids are insulators and the melting point are very low next hydrogen bonded molecular solids you have read this in class 11 hydrogen bond is a very weak bond that is formed between the most electro negative element and the most electro positive element the electro positive element that is usually present is hydrogen there so the bond a weak bond that is formed between the most electronegative element and the most electropositive element is called a hydrogen bond right in hydrogen bonded molecular solids the attractive forces which are present are hydrogen bonds there examples you can give the example here water h2o a very common example for hydrogen bonding is water physical nature of water is hard ice rather you can say it is hard and uh, conductivity if you say they act as insulators uh, that is they are very bad conductors of electricity there melting point is low so i hope first type of solid molecular solid is very clear let me come to the second type of molecular solid that is ionic solids there so the constituent particles that are present here are ions and the forces of attraction that are present in case of ionic solids are coulombic or electrostatic forces of attraction so why electrostatic forces of attraction are present because a positive ion and a negative ion both are present so because of it electrostatic forces of attraction develop in between them and ionic solids are held together by coulombic or electrostatic forces of attraction right the examples which come under this ionic solids are uh, all ionic solids sodium chloride magnesium oxide zinc sulfide calcium fluoride potassium nitrate barium chloride etc other examples you can give physical nature if you note they are hard but brittle in nature and conductivity if you see electrical conductivity insulators in solid state why because ions are not there in case in case in solid free to move they are not free to move in case of solids so they act as insulators in solid state but they can act as very good conductors in molten state as well as in aqueous solutions there then melting point if you see they are having very high melting points so second we have completed the molecular solid it is ionic solid third let us come to the third point that is third classification metallic solids there of crystalline solids it is metallic solids so here the constituent particles that are present are positive ions in a sea of delocalized electrons and the bonding that is present is metallic bond you all know about it all metals come under metallic solids iron copper silver magnesium etc all metals will come under this examples for metallic solids there they are hard but malleable and ductile i hope you know malleability malleability is they can be beaten into sheets and they can be drawn into wires there so they possess the characteristic features of metals there if you look at the conductivity they are conductors in solid state as well as in molten state 
and the melting point is fairly high. I hope I'm clear with the third point. Let me now come to the fourth type that is covalent or network solids there. Here the constituent particles that are present are atoms and the bonding that is present, the force of attraction that is present is covalent bond that is present between them. Examples, remember in your mind, it comes silicon dioxide, quas, silicon carbide, SIC, carbon that is diamond form, aluminum nitride, ALN, graphite. These all come under the examples of covalent or network solids there. With an exception, silicon dioxide, car silicon carbide, diamond, they are very hard in nature. Carbon is an exception there. That is, it is soft in nature there. And, and again, the exception, graphite acts as a very good conductor of electricity, whereas silicon dioxide, silicon carbide, diamond, they act as insulators. Their melting point is fairly very high. You need to learn this table in detail because the questions come from this table, examples will be given to you and you will be asked to which type of ionic solid to, or to which type of molecule, which type of crystalline solid they belong to on the basis of intermolecular forces that are operating on them. Let us come to the in-text questions here. Classify the following solids in different categories based on the nature of intermolecular forces operating in them. So you can see the question, potassium sulfate, tin, benzene, urea, ammonia, water, zinc sulfide, graphite, rubidium, argon, and silicon carbide. So where you can see a positive ion and a negative ion, that is a cation and an anion, where you can see that comes under ionic solids. That is a big hint which I'm giving you. Ionic solids, you, where you can find ions, both cation as well as anion. They come under the category of ionic solids. So here you can see potassium sulfate and zinc sulfide. You can see Th these two come under the category of ionic solids. Then where you can see the metal, metal form, they come under metallic solids there. So the metals which are present here are tin and rubidium. They come under metallic solids. Then network of covalent solids, graphite and silicon carbide. They come under ne covalent or network solids there. And the last, that is molecular solid. In molecular solid, benzene, urea, ammonia and water. They come under molecular solid, but you will specify which molecular solid they come under. Are they non-polar molecular solid? Are they polar molecular solid? Or, or are they hydrogen bonded? So you can write benzene comes under non-polar molecular solid. Benzene and argon, they come under non-polar molecular solid. They don't have polarity on them. Urea comes under polar molecular solid and ammonia and water, you can write, they come under hydrogen bonded molecular solids there. Correct? I hope you have understood the answer. You will write these questions, in-text questions, and along with it, you will write the answer in your assignment notebook. Then the next question let us come to. Solid A is a very hard electrical insulator in solid, as well as in molten state and melts at extremely high temperature. So you can see a hint that is given here. Solid A is hard, electrical insulator in solid as well as in molten state. And melting point is extremely high. What type of solid it is? So answer you right, covalent or network solid. Just now I have shown you in the table there. So the answer for it is covalent or network solid there. Correct? Example you can give, silicon carbide, then aluminum nitride, graphite, those examples you can include in it if you want to. Next, I come to the next question. Ionic solids conduct electricity in molten state, but not in solid state. Explain. The answer to this question you'll write, ionic solid conduct electricity in molten state because in ionic, so in molten state, the ions are free to get dissociated. That means ionic solid get dissociated into their respective ions 
in molten state and ions are the carriers of electricity there so since ions are the carriers of electricity solid a that is a that is it in ionic solids in molten state they can conduct electric, electricity but in solid state they cannot conduct electricity because ions are not free to move they are held together by strong forces of attraction there so in solid state ions are not present so they cannot conduct electricity ionic solids cannot conduct electricity in solid state there next look at the next question it is what type of solids are electrical conductors malleable and ductile the answer to this question it is a big hint that is given here malleability and ductility so the characteristic feature is possessed by metallic solids so you will write the answer metallic solids so here i complete with this part next part we'll start with the unit cell in the next lecture there thank you children if you have any doubt you can ask me 